accessible art, painting our potential. Can master painters make painting accessible for everyone? Hi, I'm Dr. K.P. McKee, Founder and Executive Director of a Spacious Place Creativity and Spirituality Center. And as we go through today's project, we would love to hear from you. If you have any questions or suggestions or comments, you can enter those in the comment box on your mobile device or on your computer. So we've been talking about ways to make art accessible to all populations. And today, we're going to talk about painting. Painting is like a sort of baptism because we take our painting tool, our brush, or our sponge, or our uh, roller, or our hand, and we dip it into a liquid, and when it's submerged in that liquid, it's transformed and loaded with potential to transform other things. And then when we share that liquid with the surface, with our painting tool, it transforms that surface with our sense of truth, maybe our sense of beauty. So how do we make art of that kind, painting, accessible to various populations? Well, fortunately, we're not on our own with this because there are three famous painters from across the globe whose art styles can be used as a way to inspire people from limited access to education or mobility, uh, experience with art, to try it for the first time. So uh, I'm going to share with you a little bit about these three painters, and please forgive any way that I may butcher their names with my Texas accent. I will give it the best I can. So the first is Piet Mondrian, who is a Dutch painter, and he is famous for his use of, use of rectangles with primary colors and white on a, his painted surface that he then uses black to outline with. So here are a couple of examples that we did using that particular style. So uh, here I'll show you one and then the other. Here's one. And here's one. So when we do this with the folks we work with, we use tempera and uh, acrylics because they're opaque and the colors are really nice and bright. And I wanted to share with you these tempera sticks, which are really great for folks who may have some difficulty with their mobility. Uh, they, they are made, this one is through Discount School Supply, their colorations. And this one is through um, Michaels, CraftSmart. But Michaels also makes these. And these are taller and they twist down, oh, these twist down as well. But uh, if you have folks who need something with a bigger grip, these are just fantastic. So when we do this art project with folks, first of all, we talk about primary colors as the building block colors that other colors are made from. And also the fact that he uses white and black and we, so we can cover that part of the spectrum. Sometimes uh, with the folks we work with, the idea of a rectangle is something that's fairly new to them. So we will say, where would you like to put the first rectangle? And then we will have our rulers and we can draw the lines. They can point where they want it to go and we divide up the page like this for them. Then, with the magic of painter's tape, they go over what we have drawn with the painter's tape. And uh, they can cut where the lines stop. Then, after they've done that, they can take their temper paints or the temper paint sticks or their acrylics, any of those, and they can fill in those colors however they choose, let that dry, and then they peel up the tape, and then we fill in the rest with black. And this is a place where you can use paint, or if you prefer, like with here, we used markers. That's basically like paint that someone's already put in a tool for them to use, and it's a little bit easier for them to access. So then they can fill that in with the black. So we have also, we will, for each of these artists, send you a link to a, an article or a YouTube about that particular artist. And so you have that one there. Second is Robert Delaunay, who is a French painter. And he did a lot of work with circles of different sizes and intersecting those and then painting in the intersections. Sometimes his work was abstract. Sometimes it was representational. So that gives people, that the folks we work with, a lot of ideas about how they can use theirs. Here's one that I started. And as you can see, we use a lot of accessible art. So we just use the back of something here. And 
You can use discs. We love to use lids from plastic containers, uh, butter and all that sort of thing that they can trace around. If they're beginning to learn how to use a compass, that's also a possibility. And then rulers for drawing lines to dissect some if they would like as well. And then they just paint in the interstices between these. And for this project, we usually use watercolors. And with watercolors, that way we can kind of repeat the idea that there's an overlap here and kind of echo his idea of things that are intersecting and are a little bit see-through. This also will give me an opportunity to talk to our folks about our rules for watercolors. And so I have my little chart here that we use. And it's just a reminder to them that before they change colors of paint, they want to always dip it in the water so that it does not look like this. And that also they want to glide their paintbrush across their paper or whatever surface instead of smashing it because a brush is our friend when we're making art and we wouldn't want to smash his face into the paper. So uh, the other one I wanted to show you that is a watercolor is not specifically about an artist, but it is such a wonderful project for getting people to see that they can create something beautiful with art. Uh, and with painting. So this is called Nighttime Trees. And the way we do the Nighttime Trees project is again, we use our Magic of Painter's Tape. And it can be cut or it can be uh, torn into shapes that look like trees. And then we're going to sprinkle the night sky with salt because the salt repels some of the wash that you're going to put. Oh, excuse me, I've got that out of order. So you're going to uh, put on the tape and then use a watercolor wash, which means you're going to mix up a good bit of watercolor and colors that feel like a nighttime sky and get yourself a fairly large brush and wash it over there and let the colors run together if you like. If a spray bottle, you can spray a little bit. And then you want to put the salt on top of the watercolor wash and let all of that dry. And you can also use uh, rock salt, right? Yes, yes. If you want some bigger sections, that's some rock salt. I didn't have any on hand to show. Uh, and also, if you want to put a moon in like this one, we used, if you have like the name badges that are the stick-on kind, you can cut a circle out of there and glue that on. One thing we remind people of is not to overdo it with the wash because it will run in side of the tape and definitely inside of the name badge type stickers. Uh, after this is dried, then they can just peel that off and it just looks so beautiful. Uh, one thing that we have discovered is that people with limited experience and limited confidence with their painting skills will say, I don't know how to make a tree. So we like to also have examples like this of how we have done it, but also just some tree silhouettes of bare trees with bare branches and to see how that we go from a trunk that's fairly large up and that things get smaller as you go to the top. So they want to do that with their, their tape. So that is watercolor with Robert Delaunay. And then our last one is Romero Brito. And I have a YouTube about him because he's just wonderful to watch. And he is a Brazilian painter and he loves bright colors and bold patterns with his art. And he also uses familiar kind of pop art things that we all can feel pretty confident painting. So um, I have started one here using, he likes to use stars and he likes to use valentines and also flowers in his art. Uh, and then he just divides them up and creates patterns inside of them and uses really strong, bright, happy colors. He really loves for his art to make people feel good. So I started this one here. If I were Romero, I probably would, you know, do some lines coming out and have sections, bold sections of color all through there. Uh, I did this one with the temper sticks. You could do it with acrylics. I think opaque paint colors are really good for a Brito project because that's very much the way that he paints. Um, but it's very accessible for people of all ages. It feels so fun for children. And we've done this project with children before. Also, when he was growing up, he didn't have a lot of access to high-end art materials. So he used what he could find, which is why I used this, this cardboard back of something. Uh, and he still does. He'll paint on 
newspaper and other things. So if the issue about making art is accessible is because there aren't very many materials available, then Romero Brito is a great inspiration for us with that. I'll just put this here so we can all look at it. So if you have found this helpful, we hope you will like it on Facebook. And also you can rewatch on Facebook on YouTube or on our website, www.aspaciousplace.com. That's also where you can look at our Young Artist Club if you're interested in your child enrolling and doing some work with being inspired by famous artists. That's what we do with that. And we'll be back on September the 12th with another episode of Making Arts Accessible for All. So uh, let's close with prayer. We give thanks for those whose mastery of art encourages us all to take a creative leap of faith, connecting us with our true selves and with the great good.